the aspects of, of benzene and compounds like that, the concentrations are probably low enough that you wouldn't expect to see acute health effects, but they're carcinogens, they're mutagens. Uh, the the long-term health effects are, 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 are really uh, quite severe, potentially. Haven't received enough attention yet, so can't put a hard number on it, but I would be concerned. I would not want to live near these rigs. Well, at the moment, it's, it's really not adequately regulated. You know, Congress in 2005 ex exempted this whole fracking process from the uh, Clean Drinking uh, Water Act, from the Clean Air Act, Clean Air Act. Some aspects of it are regulated under federal law, but for the most part, it's not. Uh, states are regulating it. Uh, they're doing a rather imperfect job. Each state handles a little differently. They're on a really steep learning curve as to how to handle this. Uh, so it, it's very much under-regulated at the moment. I mean, a, it's a real need to get some federal leadership out there and, and really do a much better job of controlling the pollution, both of air and water, and these greenhouse gas emissions. The ones right at the wellheads there are completely unprocessed, and it would uh, certainly contribute to smog, ozone, and it would, uh, as I say, it's putting out carcinogenic substances. I would not want to be breathing the air downstream of those uh, rigs. The pressure gets too high, they have to let it go, and you, yeah, there it is. That's a lot of gas flowing out of that one. They have the capability of flaring it, that is burning it and turning it to carbon dioxide instead of just uh, venting it like this. And from a global climate change perspective, that's a lot better because methane's such a potent greenhouse gas, but they don't like to do it because it draws public attention, it makes a lot of noise, it disturbs people. So they like to just have this venting, which as you can see, without your fancy FLIR camera, you wouldn't know they're doing anything at all there. That, that's quite an impressive flow. Looks so peaceful until you turn on your FLIR camera. Methane's completely invisible to the naked eye, but it's, it strongly absorbs in the infrared radiation. That's what makes it such a powerful greenhouse gas. It's absorbing that infrared, and, and that camera is picked up to, to mimic that uh, same wavelength, so that's what you're seeing. Yeah, so that's really impressive. Venting, again, that's purposeful. It's not, a, it's not a leak. It's not an accident. It's how they maintain the, the pressures in their storage tanks and pipeline facilities. The Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection study was limited in scope and duration. They only looked at a very small handful of sites for a very limited duration. That analysis did not look at or consider the cumulative, chronic, environmental and public or human health concerns associated with air pollution and the Marcellus shale industry. The Chesapeake Bay Foundation has asked the federal government for what is needed. And what is needed is a comprehensive environmental impact study that will look at all the air, land and water impacts associated with this Marcellus shale industry.